Okay, so today I'm going to be putting together a system for a client. It's going to be going into this InWin model BL631 case. It's a pretty, uh, pretty nice little um, micro ATX or ITX case. It's got space for a DVD drive, which is important to my client, along with four USB ports on the front and headphone and microphone inputs. Let's see. Set this over here. Bought all the components from uh, Newegg. I mostly buy from Amazon, but Newegg in this case turned out to be quite a bit cheaper than Amazon. Okay. So we got a be Quiet Shadow Rock LP CPU cooler. This, what is this? Oh, okay. Got the RAM, got 16 gigabytes of uh, DDR4 memory, and a DVD drive from Asus. Intel Core i7 7700K processor. And uh, this processor is overclockable, however, the motherboard that I got is a H270M. And uh, in order to overclock the processor, we would have to have gotten a Z270 uh, motherboard, uh, chipset motherboard. And um, quite a bit more expensive, and really, uh, the processor as it is will be running plenty fast enough without being overclocked. So, not overclocking the processor on this one. And lastly, I think, yeah, is a Samsung 960 Evo M.2 drive. This is a one terabyte drive. So, be a nice, speedy system. Okay, so I'm going to set this down on the floor. And put a couple of these things down there. Let's see, probably need the processor and the RAM right away. DVD drive, not so much. And I'm going to go ahead and put the solid state drive. I'll go ahead and leave that on, on the desk. Got enough space. Okay. All right, let's get the motherboard out. This is an Asus motherboard. I tend to buy Asus products whenever I can. Only really had one problem with, uh, with Asus as a company. Oh wow, it didn't really come with much. So we got the motherboard, we have the back plate, a couple of SATA cables, which we're only going to need one of them. So you've got a manual, which will come in handy, and there's a disc in there, which we may use. It's got uh, drivers for all the hardware and some software on it. And finally, there's some uh, screws and risers that have to do with uh, the M.2 slots. Let's see. Let's go ahead and move that on down. Don't need the box, I don't think. All right, let's set that stuff over there. Okay. Take a look at the motherboard. So the M.2 slot is right there. There's just one on this motherboard, which... Oh, actually, there's two. There's one, two. So we put, could put a second uh, M.2 drive on there. Okay, let's go ahead and open it up. What I'm going to do is put everything on the motherboard and then put the motherboard with just about everything on it in the case. Well, they're not kidding with this sticker. Lord. Okay. All right, so we got a little manual, probably don't need. There's the M.2 slot, or M.2 SSD. All right, probably doesn't matter which one we put it in. Um, so it just kind of goes in at an angle, kind of like laptop RAM like a 30 degree angle, kind of 
kind of wiggle it in until it stops, and then push it down and put the screw in. So we need to get a screw out of here. Okay. Just push that down and get the screw started and in. Actually, wait a minute. I think we need a riser. Okay. So this riser needs to go in first. Without that riser, the uh, M.2 drive doesn't lie flat on the motherboard. That should make it lie flat. Down and screwed in. Okay, so this screw and riser is for the other slot. Just gonna put that back in the little bag and we'll put that in the motherboard box when we're done for a possible future use. Okay, so let's put that down there. All right, next up, let's go ahead and put the RAM in. It's got four RAM slots. Two are black and two are gray. And the way this works is you put, if you have one, um, if you have one stick of RAM, you put it in the lighter colored slot that's closest to the CPU. So I've got that open. I'm gonna go ahead and close it. Close the extras. So the lighter colored slots closest to the CPU is right there, and this can only go in one way. There's a, a little notch there that matches up with a bit of plastic on the slot. So when you push it down, you want to hear it click on both sides, and that's it. Now, if, there, if I had two sticks of RAM, I would put one there and the other in the other gray slot. And of course, four, you just load it up. All right. Next step, let's do the CPU. So let's uh, push down on the retention lever and push it to the side. It'll come up, put it all the way back, and that'll lift the load plate. That's the CPU socket. Don't even think about touching those pins unless you want to break it. So let's open up the little clamshell that the processor is in. It's got two little divots where you can reach in and grab the processor. Let's see. Um, on the socket, there's generally a triangle to let you know which way to put the triangle on the processor. On this one, it looks like it's a little dot on the motherboard. So let's turn that around so that the triangle on the processor matches where the dot is on the motherboard. You can also tell it's going to go in the right way by looking, uh, there's little indentations on the processor on either side up here that go around little bits of plastic on the processor. So I'm just going to lay that down and it's in. So I will close, put down the load plate, make sure that it goes under this little shoulder screw on the motherboard. And if you lower the retention lever, the cover will pop off. And there it is, that's installed. You want to keep this little cover because if you ever need to send the motherboard back to the manufacturer or just ship it for any reason, when you take the processor out, you have to have this in place because anything moving around while it's being shipped or transported you know, in any way can uh, mess up those pins. And while it's possible to unbend them, you really just want to make sure you don't bend them to begin with. 
uh, best practice, really. Okay, so all that. Back in the box. I'm going to keep this here to put in the motherboard box when we're done. All right, next up is the processor cooler. And this is a Be Quiet Shadow Rock LP. And it will cool up to a 130 watt processor, which this one is. Okay, so we got some directions. And I always recommend reading the directions for these things because no two are alike and you don't want to mess up putting on the processor cooler. Let's see what we got in here. We got a fan that will go on the top. There's the cooler itself. Nice looking. It comes with thermal compound already applied. And the rest of that looks like packaging. Okay. Actually, it's kind of heavy. important stuff in here. Yeah, I think there's some stuff on the bottom. Yeah, that's all the hardware. Okay. We're burying the DVD drive in that box. Okay. So, let's open up the hardware box. We got a couple of clips that will hold the fan in place. Let's see what else. Okay, there's a back plate that goes on the underside of the motherboard. A couple of different kinds of plates, a little tool. And then all the little screws and risers and standoffs and what have yous. Gotta get all those out. All right, so let's look at the directions. Okay, it looks like. Uh, couple of different languages there. Hopefully this one's got the English on it. Well, this one's got uh, other languages as well. Okay, so... Looks like a list of parts. And then down at the bottom it's got the different kinds of CPU sockets and which parts to use. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I guess there was English on this. Yeah, it's up the top. Okay, so for Intel, Intel directions are up here at the top. Mm -hmm. So on the back plate, you put the screws through the center. There's three possible spots to put the screws. Um, we're using an uh, 1151 processor, so we're going to be using the center insert. And it's kind of the same deal on the little bars. Got three possible holes for the screws to go through, so they'll be going through the middle on both of those. Just a little tool. Okay, so we got a couple different kinds of screws. All right, let's see. Okay, so these are the back plate screws. four of them, and there are. So the back plate doesn't really have a front and back. You can do it either way. What it's telling us to do is put the screw 
screws through the center. Like that. Let's do two at a time, or maybe one at a time if that's easier. And it says to put this little washer through here, which will hold the screw in place. Not let it flop around too much. So through there, and then the washer. Nice. Okay. Do that again. It's a nice design. like that. And like so. Okay. I'm going to leave the motherboard up and see about getting those screws through the holes in the motherboard. Nice. So I can lay it back down while keeping them in place. <laughs> It'll be easier said than done. Okay. So that's right. Now, next up. Okay, so now we take these little guys and screw them into place. I'm just going to get them all pretty much snug down and then go back and tighten them. So what I'm putting on right now are the ones without the screws coming out the bottom. And these looks are, are just for socket 2011. I'm going to set those aside and we're just using the ones without the screws on the bottom. So now I'm going to take my screwdriver and we're going to tighten down each one of these. And they don't have to be absolutely crazy tight. Just do it till they generally stop. Because on the back side it's likely to uh, to move a bit. Let's see. Let's turn it over and take a look. Yeah, so those are down and it's on there nice and tight. Okay, now we take these little crossbars, which will go like that. And these four screws. will go in to each. What I do is just get them all on there and then go back and tighten them down. What I'm trying to do is put 
the screws through the center part. Like the back plate, these, um, these crossbars have three different spots where you could put screws. So I'm putting it through the center, which will be for socket 1150X, which is what I have here. So through the center, I'm going to go ahead and tighten both of those down. Okay, so I'm doing it so that the uh, they're kind of this part right here is pointing towards the processor with this part with the screw hole upward. Did it the other way, I don't think this would work at all. Okay, so I'm basically just going to get it on there. Get the screw started. Oh, come on, stand up straight. There we go. Okay, so both screws through the center hole on the crossbar. Go ahead and tighten down both sides. Okay, now next up is this main little crossbar. And it will go through there. Go ahead and take the cover off. That's thermal compound already applied. I don't see any reason to change it. This is supposed to go right through here, kind of center up, and generally lock into place, kind of. It would still move around if I let it. All right, so this next part, from what I understand, is fairly tricky. You take these two screws and you have to get them under there and in place, kind of like that, doubt you saw it. And same on the other side. I'm sorry, this camera angle is not the best for this situation. Okay, but basically what I did is I set the screws in there. So now, um, I can put the uh, heat sink essentially in the correct space, in the right place. It's down, and we're clearing the RAM by probably a couple of millimeters, but hey, that's all we needed. Let's take a look. Okay, so the screws are just about in the right spot and hopefully I can get in there with this screwdriver and get it started on both sides. Can't tell at the moment that that's actually going in. Feels kind of loose. Now it would have bottomed out by now. course, being a magnetic screwdriver, it's going to want to pull the screw up. Let's see. Okay, we're not quite there. side. Actually that side's just about tight. Let's take this up a little bit and screw it in just a little bit, which should allow this to move enough to get it to drop into the hole, although it's not quite. There it goes. Okay, so that side's being tightened down. Get it just about there, come over and do the other side. And I'm sorry if y'all can't see this. It's very difficult to get the correct angle. 
Okay, so that's that's down. And that's all the way tight. Let's go back and do this one. Should be pretty close. And tight. Okay. So that is essentially installed. Let's go ahead and do the fan. Okay. There should be a spot to plug in the CPU cooling fan, which is right here. I'll go ahead and get that plugged in. It's marked CPU fan on the motherboard. That's how I know. Okay, so best way to do this probably is to put it under that spot right there and something like that. That should be fine. Now these clips, see they probably go this way. Those holes and then this will pull down and be able to catch. Actually, probably not through the top holes. Should know better. Okay, bottom holes. And then we pull down here. And that should be able to catch on something. Or maybe I'm just doing it completely wrong. Oh, you know what? I think it was the top holes it was supposed to go into. I can see the little ledge that it's supposed to grab onto. Okay. Both down. Is that not correct? Let me read the directions. Would be a good idea. Probably says not like that, dumbass. Um, there's no picture. I need a picture. I think I'm just dumb. You probably agree. Is it just supposed to kind of do... See, ordinarily, these things have an extra bit of metal that sticks out that lets you grab it and pull it down. No such luck on this one. But I think it's supposed to just pull down and go right under there. Just not quite getting it. Maybe it would be easier to do it the other way. Go ahead and get it under there. And then kind of bring it up like that and clip it in. Yeah, I think that was actually easier. Lord. Okay, Let's see if we can do it quicker this time. So kind of down like that. Doesn't quite want to line up. Okay. So now I'll take one up and in, and I'll use my pliers to do the other. Like that. All right. 
nice looking cooler. Should do the job. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and put up the extra stuff that we didn't need. And these are for other processors, both AMD and uh, Intel. Just different types. And box, and put that all in the same box. All right. So let's take this and kind of just set it over here and get the case open. Oh, that's upside down. Looks like there's four screws holding this on. It's kind of an older style case. Should just slide off without too much trouble, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, so old desktops used to be like this, even old uh, mid tower cases where the tops and the uh, the sides are kind of all together. All right, so these are feet, so you can stand it up vertically and it won't fall over unless you really try. Um, this is kind of a fan shroud, which we're not going to be using because it will not fit with our uh, our cooler. If you had a standard cooler, um, on a motherboard in here, it would sit approximately there, and then the fan would actually come up a little bit through here. Um, and there's a way you can flip this around just in case the fan and the processor and everything's in a slightly different spot. But um, we're not going to be using that because we have a uh, quite large um, cooling fan, which I'm hoping will fit in this case. Looking at it right now, it's probably going to be close. Let's go ahead and try it. This is just a quick little test fit. I think it's going to be too tall. Maybe you need to get a new, get a different case. Let's take that off. That's just a front cover. Unfortunately, we can't use really a much smaller uh, cooler than this with the processor we have. Okay, so my uh, my phone overheated, and that made the camera stop recording. Uh, back again, and while it was cooling down, I was doing some test fitting. Set the pro set the motherboard back in here, and approximately the correct space. And what I noticed is um, one of the things that was keeping it from fitting was this uh, little dust filter that was there at the top of the uh, the case, so I took that off, and it does fit. However, the other thing I noticed is that the placement of where the processor is doesn't match up um, with where the, uh, the vent holes on the, the top of the case here are. Um, so basically, this would go like that, and with the way the processor is right now, it would be about one-third um, covered. Um, I'm sorry, where the cooler is now it would be about one-third covered. What I'm thinking about doing, and I think this will work, is moving around um, basically rotating the uh, the cooler 180 degrees to get the fan just about in line with that uh, top vent. So let's do that. Um, what I'm going to do is take the the board out of the case and move the case out of the way temporarily. I'm just going to set it down on the floor along with the top of the case. Okay, so let's go about taking this off. I might be able to kind of do that down and out. Yep, okay, well that worked. Maybe that'll help me get that back on. Ugh, man, what a pain. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect the CPU cooling fan. Set it over there. And we are going to rotate the cooler. 
take the two screws off. There's one. And two. I should be able to lift up on the cooler. And the thermal compounds kind of got it stuck. When you get this, if you just kind of do slight rotations as you pull up, eventually the compound will release. Very, can be very sticky. Let's make sure I got the screws completely undone. That one is. Yep. So it is just the adhesion of the, uh, there we go. All right, so the thermal compound looks pretty good. Um, all right, I'll tell you what. Since we messed up the thermal compound, let's go ahead and replace it. Uh, get the good stuff, Arctic Silver 5, and paper towel. Yeah, it's coming off nice and clean. If you absolutely positively want to get all of the thermal compound off, you can use isopropyl alcohol to get it off, but that'll be fine just doing that. Okay, and there's a lot more on this side. What I'm doing is just moving the paper towel to another spot and continuing to wipe it off. Okay. That's good. So this is Arctic Silver 5, and when I apply thermal compound, what I do is put about a pea-sized amount in the center of the processor. That's enough for this size processor. What it'll do is when I put down that uh, heat sink on top, it will spread out and cover the whole processor. All right, so get that back in the spot and drop these into place. There's one side. Okay, so I'm wanting it to go this direction. And the reason I didn't do this before is that it's there's a possibility when I lower this down that it's going to get in the way of the RAM slot, but it's not. Look at that. There's plenty of room over there. So that's good. So I'm just going to kind of push down on the cooler. Get it essentially in the right spot. So now I'm going to go through the cooler to the screw and get one side started, and then do the other side. I'm not sure if that caught. No, I didn't. Having the same problem as before. Push down a little bit to get it. Yeah, okay. That definitely got started. And this side, I think, was already. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm basically just screwing down kind of evenly on both sides. And that will help keep the... Uh, the compound spreading out evenly until they stop. And hold the motherboard. All right, okay. I think that will give us a better position um, in the case. All right. 
I'll kind of do the same thing, hopefully more easily this time. So to take it off, I was kind of pushing down here. And that is difficult. Okay, well that was easier than last time. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in the CPU fan. Okay, and then down and in. Oh yeah, that was definitely easier. So not having the little bit of metal that's usually on these kind of clips right there that lets you push down and in, kind of pushing down right here did the trick. All right. Um, pull that over there and get the case back. All right, before we put the motherboard in, uh, before I was just doing test fittings, but now we actually need to put in the back plate. On the back plate, if you um, put the motherboard in approximately the right orientation, it's going to go in. So you want to make sure that it lines up. You don't want to put it in backwards or upside down, that is. Uh, so like that, and just move it over. And on this, most cases have um, like placeholder uh, ones that are already in. That you have to pop out. This one did come with any kind of a placeholder. What you do is you kind of get two of the corners in and then you move to the other and push and it feels like you're gonna have to push too hard to get it to go in but that's pretty normal. Um, so basically get half of it in and then move to the other half. This is particularly a pain. You want to get it on both sides. This case is a little bit flimsy. Okay, that felt like it went in. Look on the back. Okay, yeah, this bottom part's not in all the way. There we go. That's all the way in. Okay. So, just, I'm holding it by the by the cooler, and some people say you shouldn't do this, but I've always done it, and I have yet to have a problem doing it. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of getting it approximately the right spot, and then I'll push it back, and what I'm looking for here is to make sure that the screw holes uh, that are underneath the motherboard are in uh, approximately the right spot. In this case, I didn't mention before, it doesn't have any risers that you have to put in. The risers are actually built in to the case, which is nice. All right, so that's in approximately the right spot. Now what you want to do is come back here and look at the ports and make sure that everything's sticking through and uh, available. Sometimes the, um, the back plates will have bits of metal uh, that will get caught underneath the, uh, like the USB ports and you have a little bit of metal going across it, you don't want that. So if you get that, take the motherboard back out, straighten out those pieces of metal, and try it again. Okay, so I'm having to push back on the motherboard a bit to get it to go into the right spot, and that's not uncommon. What I'm going to do is get one of the main screws in place, and then tighten it down. So I've got one screw kind of going and then one of the middle ones. I'm going to push this back and I'm going to look through the motherboard for the screw holes and I'm going to get it, get them all so I can see the screw holes through the motherboard and then tighten this one down. And that will hold it into place well enough while I go around to each of the uh, other screw holes and tighten them down. Let's try that one more time. These ones at the back there didn't quite line up right. All right, I think that'll do it. Okay. Yeah. I did mention uh, the screws. Um, there's, looks like three different uh, sizes or kinds in this. 
generally the screws that you put through the motherboard and into the risers um, are these ones with the thicker, um, you know, thicker threads. There's a couple of screws here with kind of finer, thinner threads. Those go into the DVD drive. And I think that's it. Um, the, uh, the other screws with the bigger threads uh, go into hard drives and things like that. By the way, if you want a better set of videos showing how to build a computer, um, the set of videos I did in 2012, uh, which are here available on YouTube, are much better at this stuff. It goes into more detail. You can see things a lot better. Um, it's more like a generic guide with showing multiple different motherboards and cases and types of RAM and you know, just everything. It's, it's pretty much there. And even though it was made in 2012, it is uh, still very up-to-date. I mean, new processors have come out, new motherboards and all that, but everything pretty much goes together the same way it did back in 2012. Or back in 2009, for that matter. I mean, how to put a computer together has not changed that much. Really, the only thing here that I'm doing uh, that wasn't in the 2012 videos is that M.2 slot. And, I mean, that's easy. They didn't uh, really have M.2 slots back then, or if they did, they were just coming out. Okay. So the motherboard's in. Um, still have to connect power to it and uh, uh, data cable running off to the DVD drive and need to connect these guys up, which I suppose I'll go ahead and do. Um, let's see. It's got, this has got two power LEDs. That's cool. All right, so on the motherboard, there's a little spot where all those little pins go. It's difficult to see, and if you have any doubts about what you're seeing, because it's too dark or your eyes aren't that good, both of which is the case at the moment for me, in the motherboard manual, you will find a little breakdown of the pins that is usually a little bit more easy to read, but these are tiny. Okay. So power LED. Looks like on this motherboard it's two that are really close together. So we'll use this power LED cable. And it's these top left ones here. And for the LEDs, the hard drive and the power LED, you need to make sure that the uh, the positive pin is going to the left pin on the motherboard. And if you're uh, if you're looking at uh, colored cables, usually the 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 darker one is the positive, but not always. You can also sometimes turn it over and find a little triangle that shows you which one's positive. There's, I don't think, any way that's going to show up, but the left one there is positive. Sorry about that, my phone overheated again. Okay, so back to the hard drive LED. Okay, so on the manual, it says it's the bottom left two pins. And again, I'm making sure that the positive goes to the left side. And when I say left side, that's looking at the motherboard in this orientation. If it was flipped around, it would be the right side then. But this is typically how you uh, look at a motherboard. Okay, so that is the other version of the LED. Okay, power switch. According to the manual, are the two pins just to the right of the power LED. And on the switches, it doesn't matter which direction you put them. And 
<laughs> Probably could have done that a little bit better. There we go. All right, and the power switch is just below that on those two pins. Right? Right. Trust me. I'm sorry y'all can't see this. Go check out my uh, 2012 build a computer set of videos. It shows that in much better detail. Well, it shows it period, let's put it that way. Um, okay, so what else do we need to do here? Um, kind of move, put these through here. Kind of put that over there. All right. So from the front, there should be two USBs and one audio. There's the audio, and the audio is over here in the corner. You generally find it down in the left corner. Only one way it can go in. Um, there's a missing pin on this connector, and a missing pin there, and you basically just match them up and push it down. Let go. Okay, yeah, it went. All right, and the USBs, there's two right there, and they're kind of similar in the way that they, they work. There's a missing pin there, and a missing pin on the motherboard. Just line them up and push down. All right, got both of those. So these cables are just kind of going to be like that in the case. That's fine. All right, now the power cables coming from the power supply will go to the motherboard and the DVD drive. And that's really all we've got on this, this computer that needs power. smarter than I am. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, my God. There's two of them. They snuck up on me. That's why I was having so much trouble, is because there's two of them. Yeah. Okay. That will go way the hell up there. May have to disconnect that to make it go all the way up there. So this is kind of. So there's a little tie down that's holding everything down that I need to release. And free up this one cable. Kind of get it to where it'll go off in this general direction. Around there. And it will plug in. Just like that, it only goes in one way, it won't fit any other way. So, something like that, I'll just kind of lay it down under there. Not bad, looks good. So, one of these will be going off to the DVD drive. Stick them right down there. So the 24 pin cable will come over and just like that 8 pin cable I put in, it only goes in one way. Just push it down until it clicks just a bit. All right. So now we need to put the DVD drive in to this guy right here. And I buried the DVD drive and stuff. 
is. I don't think there was anything else in the box that we need to... No, that was, that's everything. That's the last thing. Okay, so... Comes with some, like, DVD movie play and stuff. <clears throat> Probably don't need that. That's built into Windows. Okay, so that will be going like that. DVD drive will go in here. Hopefully. Kind of like that. see how they intend me to secure this into place. Huh. Oh, you know what? It would help if I put it in right side up. Woo! Professional. Oh, get in there. Okay, so there's a spot for me to put two screws right there and right there. And these are going to be those small threaded screws that I mentioned before. It's like there's just a spot to put two of them. I don't think we can get to anything useful on this other side. Yeah, so it'll be holding by two screws. It should be fine. I don't think she's going to use it that much, but she wanted the option to burn stuff built into the computer. It won't go in the hole. There it goes. Just was a little bit out of alignment. So let's go ahead and plug in the power. Only goes in one way. There's a little pin that keeps it from going in upside down, backwards, or what have you. We're going to need a data cable running between it and the motherboard, which we will use one of these guys. Let's see, I'm going to use the one that's got a 90 degree connector on one end. I think it'll work better. So I'm going to plug that in there and the other end onto the motherboard. Several spots it can go, not really a wrong place to put it. So I'm just going to choose one of them. And on this side it's pinned as well, so it'll only go in one way. Okay, so now I should be able to. this into the right spot. Let's see. Okay. That 24 pin cable is a little bit in the way, but not too bad. Alright. So that's down and these go back. So we'll clip things. Okay. Go ahead and put the front cover on. Oh, I gotta break this out. So the front cover's got this little thing. So, yep, let's push through. There we go. Okay, and that's opens up the DVD drive bay. Get that on and doesn't 
quite want to clear. top on but that took the, the bottom off hmm. there we go just had to kind of snap it into place yeah the bottom didn't yeah you can go back in on that side all right let's try it again Okay, kind of like that. And is that how it's supposed to go? Let's see. Oh yeah, it's aligned, right? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so everything's in. Um, let's go ahead and put the cover on. That. Yeah, that gives us a lot better placement of the uh, CPU cooling fan, and it fits nicely. There we go. Yeah, so there's the CPU cooling fan, and that should give it plenty of, uh, of air. Alright, I'm going to put one screw in, and we'll take it over and plug it in and give it a try. Actually, I've got a monitor right here in front of me. Get that turned on, and... Need a HDMI cable for the video. Need a keyboard and a mouse. A keyboard. that. All right, so a mouse. Plug into the front here. And power button. That. No, where's the power button? There it is. We have to actually plug it in now. Give it some power. Okay. All right, got power. Uh, let's switch the input on the TV. I think this is HDMI 2. Let's see. Yep, there we go. BIOS. It says the CPU is newly installed and to go into the setup. All right, well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's get my camera up here. All right. This one's nice and quiet. It's much quieter than my computer at the moment. Um, okay, so F1 to continue. And on the left side here, it sees the Samsung SSD and the Asus DVD drive. All right, well, I suppose let's get Windows uh, 10 installed. I have it over here on a little flash drive. I'll just plug it into the front here. Okay, mouse is working. Okay, let's do F10 to save and exit. We haven't made any changes, that's fine. It will probably see the Windows 10 on that flash drive and just start booting to it. Yep, it is booting to it. Okay, well, let's get it going. Right, next, and install now. I'm not going to give it a product key at the moment. 
I'm going to say I don't have a product key. I'm going to install Windows 10 on it though. So when I do get the Windows 10 product key, uh, the Pro version, I will uh, enter that later. So just make sure you choose the one here that you actually are going to be activating. Otherwise, you'll have to reinstall Windows. So we'll do a custom install, and it sees the drive. That's great. I'm just going to hit Next, and it will format the drive, partition it, format it, and start the install. Whenever you're installing Windows onto a um, M.2 SSD, uh, as long as you're installing Windows 8.1 or 10, it will it almost usually, let's put it that way, it will usually just see the drive and uh, let you install it. If you're in trying to install Windows 7 onto a M.2 drive, it can get pretty complicated. It's doable in almost all cases, but it's it can be a process. Okay, well, I think I'll end the video there. Um, thanks for watching.